and let's do this thing. <laughs> so 21 years ago, we moved to Bozeman, and my husband did all the house hunting. So over the phone, he called and said, okay, I've got this great house, it's got this many bathrooms and bedrooms, and oh, by the way, it needs a ton of repairs. And he talked about sloughing plaster and cracked windows and said it would be really impractical to buy a 100-year-old disaster of a house. But he said, I know you are going to love it. And I did. I walked in, and my heart said yes as I looked out the plate glass window onto a beautiful deck with trees and snow. Our then three-year-old ran laps around the living room and said, I love this house. It feels good. Now, I hadn't started studying typing systems or problem-solving styles, but how my son, my husband, and I reacted are great examples of how elemental problem-solving styles work. Um, when I walked in the house, my heart was absolutely overwhelmed by the sense of peace that I felt. And I thought, well, we've got to figure this out. How we pay for the mountain of repairs, we'll, we will negotiate. But, um, and, and this was where I decided. So I have a great opportunity of working with uh, international teachers and leaders and uh, activists from all over the world. And they talk about these four elemental problem solving styles. And it is a joy to hear from them um, how they show up in their different cultures. For example, in uh, the Hindu tradition, 5,000 years old, they're embedded in their me Ayurvedic medicine system, there is um, an elemental problem-solving style. And they, the doctor will look at you, watch how you decide things, your demeanor, to make the decision of how to treat your maladies. In China, they have much the same. This has now shown up in modern day in the Myers-Briggs, or MD MBTI. Um, we, but we've noticed for millennium that some of us are analytical, like Snape. Others of us are sweet, like Neville. And still others of us are ridiculously compulsive, like Harry Potter and me. Um, what I noticed when I was doing my doctorate dissertation, which became a book, uh, is that the elemental styles show up as the elements um, and that we have preferences to particular types of data and that determines our style. So for example, those of us who trust our senses are connected to earth and uh, we believe in what we can touch, see, feel, and um, hear. And uh, I just worked with these Brazilian uh, young uh, leaders, and these guys were connected to Earth, so they're modeling that for you. Uh, these caring souls were connected to water, and uh, water is all about emotions and relationships. We trust those most. Uh, when we walk in a room, we can feel how everyone is feeling, like uh, my son. They're so cute. Uh, and then there's those fiery souls that trust their hearts. Uh, we can be bouncy and enthusiastic and uh, passionate. Uh, we have a habit of being like the tiggers in your group. Uh, we love to bounce around, and sometimes we bounce into your carrot patch, and we really feel sorry and sad about that. But we do it anyway. Um, and uh, then last, we have air. And air are the quick problem solvers. They, um, they always are out there blowing us away. And uh, sometimes we actually are called airheads as a result. Um, I love how these guys, when I asked them to model the style, they went to solving problems. So my now 24-year-old son, or our 24-year-old son, the tallest, uh, still connects well with water. My uh, husband uh, believes in uh, air and earth. And that I love studying conflict is actually another clue to my fire preference. The younger two weren't alive or talking during that story. Um, so it's important, some facts about the elemental problem solving styles, is one is that you are not your style. It's just a preferred tool. So when a problem comes, we grab our favorite style, like I will grab that first bamboo spoon uh, whenever I need to cook something. 
They're also like four different radio stations. So for some of us, um, we're listening to the dream station and others listen to the emotion station. And have you ever had that experience where you're talking for 20 minutes and it's like no one's hearing anything anyone else says? Um, you're just tuned to a different station. Uh, but artful leaders listen and can tune to all four. This amazing teacher leader from Ghana talks about when she has neglected children who come to her class without food, how she gives them food, earth, a motherly affection, water, and then calls sometimes for fiery vision or teaches new skills. Um, I love that cultures also add an elemental preference. So this smart uh, Egyptian student uh, lawyer actually was last summer facilitating a dialogue with watery Japanese administrators and uh, earthy Montanans and even a, an enthusiastic Saudi doctor. Um, so think when you are in conflict that it can be a game of guessing the style of your other opponent. So if I got quiet, crossed my arms, and stopped talking, that tells you we're in earth. Slow down. Ask me good open-ended questions. All four styles are valuable, and you need to develop each and every one. Think about it. If you don't have earth, you aren't here. We're 80% water. If uh, you don't have fire, again, you're dead. And if you stop breathing, same problem. So we, we want to work on each and every one. Uh, and is, again, it's how these guys demonstrate. Um, we are called as leaders to develop all four of these, to be fully physical, emotional, creative, and intellectual beings. May you remind, remember to develop all four and help us to solve the difficult problems of our times. Thank you.